Hello, welcome to GCN show. Thanks, Pete. Mm. Not being funny, but have we got anyone else? Oh, we've got the current world road champion, Michal Kwiatkowski. Ah. Hi, I'm Michal Kwiatkowski. Welcome to the GCN show. Blimey. They might be good cyclists, but I tell you what. They've got a bit to learn about the old welcome, haven't they? Need a bit of show work, them how it's they? done. Let's do it. Okay. Welcome to the GCN show! Anyway, coming up, the Tour de France has started. Plus, you can win one of three Grand Tour cookbooks from the lovely Hannah Grant. And we've got Tech of the Week coming from Orbea and Garmin. Plus, all of our regular features, comment, caption, and tweet of the week. Great few days on the Tour, Dan. Yeah, really. I, I got to ride with Seth Van Mark. I gave him a few little pointers, actually, for how to ride on the cobbles on stage four. He's kind of, he's pushing me on a bit. Fantastic. Well, I've been working on Grapple's lead out. Need, need a few tweaks. Oh, yeah? Mm. What your lead out? We're back again. I'm Hannah Grant. Today we're going to make cashew cookie dough energy bars. As we mentioned at the top of the show, head over to our GCN Facebook page for your chance to win one of three copies of this rather sturdy book, The Grand Tour Cookbook by Tinkoff Saxo's Hannah Grant, one of our favourite Pro Tour chefs, if not the favourite in fact. Yeah, now you will need to be a subscriber to GCN on our YouTube channel, and then all you have to do is answer a very simple question, and that is, how many stages are there in the 2015 Tour de France? Now, competition will close at 10am on Monday the 13th of July, that's 10am GMT. Caramelised onion soup is for lunch, mate. That's good. And that's how really many nice. Are there? Don't know. I haven't got a clue. Hey Tom, do you want to taste my balls? Oh, thanks, Hannah. The opening time trial stage of the Tour de France around Utrecht was a sizzlingly hot and fast affair. Rowan Dennis of Team BMC blitzed around the 13.8 kilometre course to take the first yellow jersey of the race. Yeah, the flying Aussie beat German champion from Etix Quickstep, Tony Martin, into second place with Fabian Cancellara in third. Now, perhaps surprisingly, the best of the GC contenders was actually FDJ's Thibaut Pinot, mm. who earned himself a buffer of two seconds over Vincenzo Nibali and nine and 17 seconds over Chris Froome and Alberto Contador, respectively. Yeah, that was a great ride. But going back to Dennis for just a second, now, he did set a record average speed for any kind of individual test at the Tour de France, whether that be a prologue or a time trial. However, there was some speculation from riders because they're on bicycle odometers and actually recorded a little bit less than the 13.8 kilometers officially given by the Tour de France. Some were saying that actually they'd only seen 13.4 around the course and that would make a significant difference to Dennis's average speed. It would be down in the 53s rather than 55.4. But great ride nevertheless. OBO on board odometers. We knew it would be windy. We knew it would be nervous. We knew it would be exciting. But I don't think any of us could have expected such an explosive and action-packed opening road stage of this year's tour. Mm, the wind cut through the peloton on the exposed Dutch roads like a chef prepping vegetables for a stir-fry. A cold, wet stir-fry. Uh, anyway, in the end, 26 riders managed to go clear. 26 riders who presumably, the day before, watched our video on how many savings you could make by sitting in the right position. Can't believe it. OK, well, on the next two runs, Matt is going to use the almost extraterrestrial wind directional sense and expertise which he has built up over well, decades of racing a bike, basically. I'm still struggling to believe that 172 riders in the Tour de France didn't watch our video the day before a really dangerous, windy day. I uh, don't know what to say about that, mate, but uh, incredible, incredible stuff. But no, despite their rather strong numerical advantage, Etix Quickstep actually left the stage empty-handed. Mark Renshaw led out Mark Cavendish with about 600 metres to go, leaving Cav to start his sprint 250 metres to the line into the wind. And it was Andre Greipel and Peter Sagan who profited from that situation, with Greipel taking his seventh stage win just ahead of a fast-finishing cigar. 
Yeah, Cavendish though couldn't even hold on for third. That went to Fabian Cancellara and that was crucial because a four second time bonus meant that he went into the yellow jersey rather than Tony Martin, Cav's teammate of course at Etics Quickstep. Now Cav came in for a barrage really of criticism on both social media and even from his boss Patrick Lefebvre but he then responded online with this. Look at this photo. If I could hang on for third, I could hang on for the win. Some imbeciles think cycling is a computer game. Problem is, social media and TV, a platform for them to be heard. Got it for Tony Martin, 85. Congratulations, Andre Greipel. There you go. Mm. Cav speaks his I mind. I like that. Yeah, my my, a good my, my voice tweets. is too deep and manly to do this impression. Can no, you do Cap, it, Dan, Cap, with your girly no, just, high pitch We've voice. just got different throats and, and, that, and different kind of vocal setups. That's mm. all it is. Anyway, it's this nature. is probably a great time, actually, to put in your lead out again with Andre Greipel. That's probably partly what helped him win the stage. Let's have a look at it again. you lead me out. I'll lead you out. <laughs> You've even got Greg Henderson worried. Did you see the tweet he put out? I know. Have I still got a job? He's quaking. I know he is. Yeah. He's almost as old as you as well. Stage three was marred by a very high speed mass pile up, which saw a number of riders actually abandoned from the race. Amongst them was Tom de Moulin, Simon Gerrans, and the first person who hit the floor, taking off a lot of skin, William Bonnet of FDJ. Now the race was then neutralized for some time due to the fact that all of the medical staff within the race were held up dealing with the injured riders, which included the yellow jersey, Fabian Cancellara. Yeah, but we did still have an absolutely thrilling finale up the much anticipated Muir de Hoy. And Chris Froome actually started to accelerate pretty early, around 400 metres to go. But Joaquim Rodriguez, with about 250 to go, accelerated up the climb, distanced Chris Froome, who managed to close within, within a second of him across the line. So Rodriguez took the stage, Chris Froome second, and Alex Valermos of AG2R. Great ride by him in third place. But notably, Chris Froome moves into the yellow jersey by only one solitary second over Tony Martin as we hit the cobbles. Yeah, although the thing that he probably was most pleased about on the day was the fact that he distanced his three key rivals for the overall classification. So, 11 seconds over Contador, Vincenzo Nibali and also Nairo Quintana. So Chris Froome and Team Sky are going to be very pleased with how they're going into the cobbles. And talking of cobbles, we actually had a word with Sepp Van Mark, who's going to be one of the riders who should have some freedom to go for the stage. <laughs> we have been joined by Mr Sepp Van Mark one of the best cobbled classics riders in the world at this time. So, as you expected, Sepp, we don't want to talk to you about Alp Duez. We'd like to talk to you about stage four and the cobbles. Time for caption competition now, and the photo that we gave you last week was this one of Peter Sagan with a couple of cheerleaders. Now, we had loads of great entries, but the winner is Ian B, who put two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Lloydie. Did you pick that one? It was just on the script. Which you wrote. Mm. Uh, anyway, well done, Ian. Just get in contact with us either on Facebook or message us on our YouTube page and we shall send you out a bit of GCN swag. Now, for this week's caption competition, we've got a nice photo. It's of the Lotto NL Yumbo team on a boat just going to the team presentation. Now, I'm going to start you off. I've already given you the lottery numbers before. We're not saying them again. Not my greatest work, but that's all I could think of in the limited time we had. I'd argue it is amongst your greatest work, but you're right on the second part of that. You can leave your captions in the usual way, which is by entering them into the comment section, which is just, just down here, below this just video. Just down here, just near Dan's feet. Could do, almost do a like as they scroll down to put the comment, couldn't you they? You could like it and then comment at the same yeah. time, just like a little combo. Not at the same time, but on well, the way Well, independently down. of each other, yeah. but not simultaneously. Now, the Tour de France isn't the only race that's going on at the moment. The 10-day Women's Giro Rosa started last Friday in Slovenia. And the opening, very short, two-kilometre prologue was taken by Annemiek van Vluten, ahead of a trio of Rabo live riders. Yeah, Barbara Guariski won stage one in a big bunch sprint, with the yellow jersey going onto the shoulders of Lucinda Brand. However, that leader's jersey did change hands once again on stage two, going over to Megan Guania, the US champion, who also won the stage. Elbows out, and you have to look down at your stem. <laughs> um, that's uh, that's the ultimate way to climb. Comments 
of the week. Now I've been put in charge of comment of the week, that's why I've had to pluralise it. Because Dan... You found a few of you. It's pretty much about good you. Ones? We better start going, otherwise ah, we're going to run out of time. First one, Michael McDermott. Dan the boss Lloyd giggling like a little schoolgirl will through me. Fine. <laughs> Javanovsky, Chris Froome and a starry-eyed Dan. Comp freak, Dan giggles like a little girl. Fine. <laughs> Tobias Hunter, Dan nodding in awe at Chris throughout gives me neck pain. Have you got more? Load, mate. Diana Turial, Dan is starstruck, love it, a solid the boss we've not seen before. Smiley face. Day C, is it just me or does Dan look like he's put on weight? Must be all those Big Macs. Oh, so it's not just about loving through, it's a bit about me no. putting weight on as well, great. Uh, is Fine, that all mate. of them? Oh, well, I could do more, but no, that's what I was going to put in this time. All right. Well, I think it's my turn next week to do comments. On to tech news now, and Garmin have been particularly busy announcing a few new products. First up, we've got the Garmin Edge 520, which supersedes the 510. It's got a whole load of new features, which we'll go into in detail once we get our hands on the unit, but here are a few of the key ones. Yeah, possibly the one or the feature that will be of most interest to many of you is the integration of live Strava segments, meaning that when you're out on a ride, you'll be able to see how far in front or how far behind you are on your chosen time, either for yourself or for another rider, or whilst riding live. Mm. Now, one of the other new features is the ability to control the radar system and also the automatic light. Both new products, again, from Garmin, so let's go through them now. Now the radar system is actually something which you mount on the rear of your bike and it will show you on your Garmin unit the exact proximity of any car or vehicle which is approaching you from behind or perhaps in your case Matt, another cyclist. Cheers. On the other hand, the automatic lights, well they will adjust the brightness and angle of the light dependent on your GPS speed data and the rear light has also got integrated indicator lights. Will it actually have like a flashing light and a siren when you park up on a climb down as well? No but it also hasn't got a black box to find out exactly how you crashed. Before we finish with tech, we spied some Cofidis riders riding what looked to be a new TT bike from Orbea, possibly the new Ordu. Yeah, hard to see too many of the details in the photographs which we've seen so far, but Matt and I are gonna be back on the ground at the Tour de France very soon, so we're going to try and get a closer look and find out some details. Many of you will know our good friend Domestique, a racing friend of mine from the early days of my career. Well, from now on, he's going to be introducing and selecting Tweet of the Week. Mm. Actually, starting from this week. Mm. Wow, what's he got for us? Well, first one is from at Adam Hansen. AC dislocation, same shoulder as three weeks ago. Was told it's going to be the most painful three weeks for me. I eat pain for breakfast. Bring it on. Mm, pretty impressive actually that Adam Hansen started after that crash. He's also got this one from, oh, from you, Matt. Is there any favouritism going on here? At Real Stevens, that is. Wednesday. Oh, sorry. Coming up. Okay. Coming up on the channel this week. Thanks, Dan. On Wednesday, it's how to pedal like a pro. Thursday, the top 10 Tour de France facts to impress your mates mm. or your close family relatives. Friday. Finally, mate. What? It's the downhill chainless presenter no. race. We've no, heard no. it from the top. Won't it's, be it's, out. No, I've had it in writing. Won't be out. It's coming. It won't Hold be on. out. Hold no, on. No, just. Yep, it's coming. No. This Friday. Won't be out. Saturday, you've got some content that you can be sure about. We're going to take a close look at Damiano Cunigo's team at De Rosa Bike. Sunday, as per normal, is off the back. Then on Monday, we've got a roadside mechanical for you, one that you should probably watch, Matt, because it's how to remove your back wheel. And then on Tuesday, we're back to the GCN show, which will be coming to you live and direct on the ground at the Tour de France. And don't forget as well, there'll be lots of additional Tour de France content making its yeah. way to you via the power of YouTube all through the week, so keep an eye out for yeah. it. Yeah, we've been really Some busy, cool stuff. We? just it's you and me. Good content. And a few creators. Yeah. Extreme Corner. Blimey. The pointy one this time, rather uh, than the next. Yeah, Extreme Corner this week comes to you live and direct. Recorded. Yeah, recorded from taped. the first road stage of the Tour de France coming out of Utrecht. Now, 
there's quite a lot of battles going mm. on the side of the road for Haribo flying around. And also Pats. riders, bottles and feed bags. This one is for the bottle. Enjoy. Really is something quite, quite special. Mm. There's no way that bot was going somebody else, was it? No, it was amazing. I mean, footballers aren't as good at diving as that. Or cricketers. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, that is all we've got time for this week, but... Oh, Dan, it's a, it's a video. We're fine. We can just run for as long as we want, mate. It's YouTube. Oh, uh, OK. Well, the cameraman just told us to stop. Well, just, just, enough. just freestyle it, mate. Mm. Uh, anyway, we've got loads more content for you. So if you click just up there, you can see our Tour de France playlist. Loads of goodies in there for you. And if you just click down here, you can see a picture of my sock, which is a, has a cameo role in our latest video, How to Save Energy Through Slipstreaming and Drafting. And staying out of the wind, really. Mm. That was a good one, that, wasn't it? Mm. Anything else we need to ask them to do? Uh, how about clicking on us to subscribe to GCN? It's absolutely free. Yeah. And like our videos, because that's how important. How that? um, Oh, God, blimey. You get your little mouse, um, that cursor, click on that little thumbs up, and away you go, basically. I sometimes wonder whether there's certain people, mm. your generation, who struggle to scroll down to get to that like button. Because sometimes you're, you're full screen, aren't you? You don't know how to get out of it. It's well. Escape. Bring me over. Escape. Yeah, well, I told you that yesterday, oh. didn't I? And, oh, oh you... and don't forget as well, we're all over Instagram at the moment. Subscribe. We don't actually subscribe to Instagram. Oh, you can follow us. You all can over follow the place. us at Global Cycling Network. No yeah. underscores, no dots, just Global Cycling Network. Get on Instagram, me and Dan are all over it. Yeah. Black and white, arty shots, pro bikes, other stuff. You know, just it's just fantastic. Twitter, at GCN Tweet. At GCN Tweet. Um, Facebook, Global Cycling Network. Yeah. 